Hi guys, welcome to Monitoring and Evaluation Made Simple. I'm your host, Coach Alexander. In case you're here for the first time, please do not hesitate to subscribe to this channel because every now and then I'm posting the latest videos on M&E, okay? So today we're going to be looking at how is monitoring and evaluation done for water and sanitation projects. Now we've got different projects around the world. We've got water and sanitation, we've got agriculture, we've got engineering. But today I thought we could talk about these water and sanitation projects briefly. So as usual, most of these, the videos that I'm doing right now, they are quite lengthy, but they are not really that long, except that I understand that most of the, my viewers want to just listen to parts of this video which are of key interest to them so that you don't have to watch the whole video. So just go in the description, click the link so that you can go to the part of the video that interests you the most. Okay, so straight on, how is monitoring and evaluation of water and sanitation projects done? Okay, so the issue that you always need to pay attention to guys is that we, along the sequence of activities we've got the inputs we've got outputs outcomes objectives and goals so the monitoring is usually done at input output and outcome stage then the evaluation usually takes place okay sorry about that actually the evaluation starts at the outcome and the objective and goal levels. And the reason is that you see, when it comes to monitoring, like if you are going to be monitoring activities, these activities are routine. They are done on a daily basis. And this is what we call routine activities. So usually such things are done regularly and hence the reason why you need to be doing the monitoring on a regular basis but when it comes to evaluation if you look at the outcomes outcomes are usually the short to medium term results or short to medium term change if you go higher like to the goals these are long-term changes so that's why evaluations are done at this stage so as you can see I'm using agriculture as an example but as we go on in the slide you're going to see that i'm going to introduce the actual logical framework approach of a water and sanitation project which will help you understand how you should be doing m and d of this project so i'm assuming that actually yeah you intend to do m and d for water and sanitation projects or you are actually in the field currently Okay, so it's, a, it's really a step-by-step -step approach. And I always talk about this to many of my friends, to many of my clients. By the way, every month I'm getting clients asking me questions, asking me how best they can improve on their M&D profession. So whenever you get a chance, simply write to me on coachalexander23 at yahoo.com. I can give you free advice if you'd like that that route. But of course, there's also a paid version which is much more enriching. But enough about that. Let's go straight to this. So the first step is that when it comes to water, water and sanitation projects, you really need to understand what the project is about. Now, most of these water and sanitation projects, believe you me, the theory of change, the reason why they are implementing these projects is because when you have communities having access to water and sanitation, one thing you can know for sure is that it's meant to improve the livelihoods and the health of that community. Because, you know, when there's little access to clean, safe water, you are prone to diseases and that is bad for the community. So the, the whole essence is that when you have these projects being implemented in communities, you want your people, your communities to have access to clean water so that they have better health, which can lead eventually to 
a better vibrant economy because with a good health, a healthy economy, I mean a healthy community, you have a community that's productive, okay? And even the death rate is low. So you really need to read a lot on the strategic plan. I personally always refer to the logical framework in case I don't want to do a lot of reading. Okay, so I will refer to the logical framework because it gives you a very summarized indication of what this project is about. And it also helps you understand the key performance indicators. So that is what is key. You need to know the key performance indicators. So step two, you need to develop the data collection tools. Okay, after you've developed those data collection tools, you need to obviously undertake the data collection and analysis. So after you've collected the data, you have to enter that data, analyze it, and then you report on it and formulate recommendations. Now, as you can see, I think this was an error on my part. Actually, step three is the actual data collection. It's actually data collection and analysis, okay? Then step four is mainly the analysis, in-depth analysis. Then step five is report writing. And then step six is formulating recommendations. So if you look at this step, this step is mainly aligned to monitoring. But when it comes to evaluation, you are not the one who does the evaluation. The evaluation has to be done by an independent consultant. And usually, this independent person will still follow the same steps, except that they will also rely on some of the information that you yourself had collected when you were doing your monitoring. So sometimes you might actually say that, okay, aren't we just doing the same job as an independent consultant? The only difference there, guys, and don't get me wrong because I've been there before, but the only difference is that independent consultants have much more experience and they have a much more independent view on what is actually transpiring. transpiring. So really they, they eliminate the issue of biasness. So now, give me a second. I want to show you a logical framework matrix for a water and sanitation project. And we're going to discuss about it in depth. Just give me a second. Okay, welcome back. So glad to have you with me again. So this is a logical framework I got over the internet. So now I have to tell you this, guys. There's a lot of information on monitoring and evaluation on the internet. And when I first started m and I had to do a lot of reading. And, you know, it was this heavy reading that made me take a lot of time in gaining the experience that I have today. But the good thing is that you don't need to do all that reading. If you just need advice, you come to me, write to me. We can, I can show you a shorter way to learn monitoring and evaluation. So looking at the logical framework approach, as you can see, this gives you a summarized understanding of what the water and sanitation is all about. So this is a project in Zimbabwe, which was implemented between 2006 and 2008, financed by the EU. So now, as you can see, the logical framework gives you a list of indicators. So what I normally do, I just go to these indicators here. Okay. So now, when you understand what these indicators are all about. For instance, percentage of access to safe water raised above 60% of the population by 2008. So already, what is coming to your mind when you see an indicator like this? There will be need for surveys, not so. So 
when you see an indicator like this, it's telling you that in the communities, you need to ask individuals whether they have access to clean and safe water. But in the event that you have, because you know these things are interlinked, so if you look at here, the source and means of verification, they're actually telling you that you can find this data in UNICEF reports, WHO health reports, government country statistics, and so on and so forth. Okay, you can find this information. And I totally agree with them because these are high level indicators. But for indicators like these low level indicators, because this is high level, this is like the, when you say overall objective, we're talking about the, the goal of the project, okay? You know, these things, believe you me, you can actually interpret, even if they don't tell you this is the purpose, but you can see that this is the purpose, actually, even the way it has been phrased. Health, water, sanitation related services to the vulnerable members of the community improve. So these are really long term objectives. So now, in the event, for instance, if you look at this indicator, percentage of target population using over 20 liters of safe water per day by 20, 2008, they are saying project reports is the only way you can verify this information. So now these project reports are the reports that you yourself, as the implementing organization, have to generate. So when you're going out there, to inquire about whether the target population is using over 20 liters of safe water per day, you are going to ask that target population using questionnaires that you yourself have designed. So you're going to interview each of these people. You're going to ask them, do you have access to safe drinking water and how many liters do you use? And I'm telling you that you get a lot of different responses. But what is key is that you need to define what safe water per day actually means. And it is after you've defined that, then can you be able to ask these questions and get the right answers. It also mentions percentage of target population using adequate latrines raised above 29% by 2008. Okay, so again, you are supposed to collect this from the target beneficiary. So you simply go to the target population and ask households. Okay, so the question is that, do you have, do you use latrines? Okay, do you use adequate latrines? So now adequate latrines can mean different things to different people. But in your project document, it is clearly defi defined. It should be defined what an adequate latrine is. So that when you go and interview these people, they'll tell you that, no, I don't have an adequate latrine. Yes, I do have an adequate latrine. And then at the end of the day, you're going to aggregate that information and come up with conclusions. So as you can see, there are how many indicators here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. You go further down, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. 14. All right. So as you can see, there are over 14 indicators. All right. So you, and you see, look at this here. It's even telling you that there are these monitoring and evaluation reports. So clearly, you are responsible for collecting this information, okay? So that's why I always mention that you need to refer to the logical framework, and that is where you're going to get the indicators, and that is where you're going to now come up with data collection tools. And then with those data collection tools, you're going to interview all those target beneficiaries they are going to give you the responses. You enter the data, analyze it, and report on it. So I sure hope you've come to understand what I've been talking about 
all this time. There's so much data on the internet to do with water and sanitation projects, to do with agriculture projects, engineering projects. Please take time to learn how these projects are structured. Until we meet again, I've been your host, Coach Alexander, and see you on the other side. Bye.